Hi friends, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. Uh, I just got back from the Sacramento Gamers Expo. They had Adam Korlick and Radical Reggie were there, and there were a couple other people, uh, another big YouTuber from locally here, which I've never heard of, I'm not sure who it is. Uh, there was like a couple people, uh, uh, actors that were voice actors for some of the early Fallout games and some of the Star Wars games and stuff, so it was really a fun time. It's something that we had planned months ago. <clears throat> My friend Steve Baker invited me. He said, dude, December 9th, we're going to have the Big Sack Gamers Expo. Would you like to come? He said, oh, dude, that sounds great. I've never been to one of those kind of things. And I went with Steve Baker a year or two ago. We went to a little, um, a small venue in San Jose in someone's backyard. It was really nice. I saw Peter Moore from GameSpot and a couple other uh, YouTubers there. Uh, and it was, it was quite fun. I found a couple of PlayStation 1 games and but anyway, I forgot about this. this is, we've been planning this for months. And I just got a text from him the other day. He goes, dude, you're all ready to go Sunday to the Gamers Expo down <clears throat> in Sacramento. And I go, oh, shit, I completely forgot about it. And, of course, I had the time to, you know, I have the time to go. But, and I said, well, dude, I said, I hate to say this, but this is like the absolute worst time. I said, we're just so broke. And I said, we just, you know, spent $1,000 on this, you know, this plumbing problem that we had. And then we've had some dry rot repairs and replacing the whole side of my house with new, you know, wood uh, before the rains hit. We've had rains off and on. I'm trying to get that done. That's, that, that's been very, I had to buy some saws and equipment to even do the job because we priced it out and people wanted a couple thousand dollars to do it, the contractors, and I just didn't have it. I said, shit, I'll just buy a circular saw and do it myself. So I'm working on that. <clears throat> so the timing is horrible, you know, we, we're trying to, we got to go down for Christmas here soon to, you know, the LA area, and I go, my God, if this is the worst time, and I told him, I said, dude, I, I hate to say this, but I, I just, I don't think I can go, I don't have any money, I'm really broke, I don't have the, you know, the 10 bucks to get in, I just, I don't have, I don't want to go to a deal like that where there's massive retro sellers, everyone's setting up their tables with all their retro games, and uh, there were VR displays and whole rooms where you could play old Atari 2600s and Pong and Intellivision and every console known to man set up with monitors. There was other little video tournaments like eSports stuff going on there or virtual reality display where you could try things on and jump around on this thing. It was a lot of really cool stuff there. It was really a nice thing. Then later they had a panel with Adam Korlick and Radical Reggie in one of the, the rooms, the auditorium rooms on the side where you could ask kind of a Q&A thing. So something I really wanted to go, but I just, I, I didn't want to go and <clears throat> not have any money, not have money to buy a Coke or to even get in the door, let alone buy games. It would be torture. I'm not a window shopper when I go to something like that. I like to come home with a few things at least, you know, it doesn't have to be expensive holy grails, but just, you know, a couple games. I said, dude, I mean, this is just embarrassing. <laughs> I don't think I can swing it. He said, Dean, he said, I just, I was looking forward to having you with me. I really want the company uh, I'd been planning on it for a while. He said, "Look, I, I, you know," he said, "I, I he said, I, I know what's going on. I know you had been down on your luck lately. I'd be happy to pay for the cover charge. I'll give you some bucks to get some games, and I'll even buy you lunch." So, you know, he's twisting my arm, and I mean, of course, I really want to go. And I go, "Oh, okay, that, it sounds great, Steve. Thanks. Go, All right, I'll see you. You know, at nine thirty Sunday morning. You know, and it's an all-day deal, like from ten a.m. to five p.m. at night." So he picks me up, and then he had some gifts for me. I had a couple of gifts for him, and then he had some uh, some gifts for me. Yeah, but what's funny is the night before, we came home late. I was over at my, with family, and I came home, and my good friend Jeremy Peterson back in Ohio, uh, I come home to my mailbox, and I, he sent me a Predator versus Alien for the Xbox three for the Xbox 360 for Christmas. He knew that I wanted this. This is kind of a holy grail for me. I already had the PlayStation 3 version, but it's prone to performance issues and I think screen tearing. Well, this is the preferred you know, version of it. So I was really excited. I mean, it's all complete and clean. I mean, Jeremy, thank you so much. This is a huge, uh, a huge gift. I really appreciate this. I've always wanted to play this, and I'd rather play the better version of it. So thanks again so much. This is a wonderful gift. He's holding my other game. He's got, you know, I don't know, 15, 16 games for me, which he set aside. So I'm trying to get him the money for that as well. It's a very lean Christmas. I already have gifts from my, um, I've got gifts from my mother-in-law and my daughter because we bought them in Hawaii. We've been saving them. 
So luckily, and then I've got my friend Cameron, an industrial gamer, I'm going to be seeing down there. I already have his, his gifts set aside when I had the money months ago. But it's been kind of a lean time, so this is, really means a lot to me. But anyway, Steve shows up. I meet him outside, and he goes, Dean, I have some things for you. See, and he knew that I wanted this. He just watched my recent Twisted Metal video, so he, he gave me Twisted Metal 4. I'm so thrilled. Thank you, Steve, so much for this. Wonderful game. It's got the manual, you know, the discs, the whole deal. Uh, this is, oh, shit, the disc just popped up. This is a game that I've really wanted to complete my Twisted Metal collection. I still have Small Brawl to get, but that one is, you know, I'll, I'll find that eventually, and it's usually not too expensive, but this is great. I'm so happy to have this. Not only that, uh, but he got me Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast. He got me the PlayStation 2 version. And I said, you know what, I've given up on the, getting the Xbox, original Xbox version, because it's like a, going upwards of 100 bucks and up. So expensive. And I just can't spend that kind of money on this. So I'm just as happy with this. And I also have the Xbox 360 version, which I don't I don't think you can get it any, anymore because of licensing issues with Ferrari, but I have it. I think it's called uh, Outrun Coast to Coast Online Arcade or something like that. Uh, but I have the Xbox 360 version off Xbox Live Arcade, which is it's a perfect version of the game. So I'm just happy to have this in my collection. I'm just as happy with the PlayStation 2 version. Again, uh, everything's complete in great shape. So thrilled to have this, you know. My PlayStation 2 collection is almost done. There's really only a handful of games left to get for it. So another wonderful gift. And then when we were at the, the event, we split up. He knows I've been going after tall boxes, so he, he surprised me. Dean, I got something for you. And he got me the tall box of Warhawk, which I wanted for the longest time. In fact, they had this at that San Jose event. I just didn't have the money for it. I left it behind. I've been kind of kicking myself ever since. I'm really on this kind of a tall box PS1 kick and it's just an excellent condition. I'm so happy to have this with the original booklet and game and the original you know case and everything. So nice. So thank you Steve so much for taking me there, for buying me a great lunch and for helping me out with this. So not only that but when I went out the door my wife the last minute goes here here's it's not much but here's twenty dollars. She gave me a twenty dollar bill. At least you got something in your pocket so you can buy a couple you know PlayStation 1 game. So my goal was to look, I was going to look at Super NES games, uh, Sega Genesis games, and PS1 games only. I didn't even look at the Xbox original games and PlayStation 2 games because my friend Jeremy's getting me all those and I'd rather just stick with what works with that. He gives me a really good deal on them and they're in excellent condition. So they had so many different booths there and venues and there were, some people had just rows and rows of PS1 games. So I had a uh, a, a few holy grails in my head. I'm trying to find Duke Nukem Land, Land of the Babes, which I had, and then I donated that to Classic Gamer. I've been kind of kicking myself. I looked on eBay, and I saw one the other day for $47. I'm going to buy it now. I go, oh my God, that game's going up in price. And I'm surprised because it was considered at the time a shit game, but it's one of my favorites. It's a follow-up to Duke Nukem Time to Kill. Static X does a really cool music and intro in the beginning of it. It's just such a great game. It's like one of my favorite, it's my second favorite PS1 game next to Duke Nukem Time to Kill. So I was really hoping to find that. Surprisingly, no one had it. There were a lot of PlayStation 1 uh, games there from multiple, you know, uh, vendors, lots of retro vendors. So, but I did find a lot of other good games. And I also found for just a couple bucks, like $3, I got Super Strike Eagle for the Super NES, which I'm so excited about. This is one of my favorite games. Kind of one of those under-the-radar games from Microprose, one of my favorite Commodore 64 developers that did F-15 Strike Eagle, F-17 Stealth Fighter, they did um, uh, Gunship, uh, God, so many military sim-type based games, and then surprisingly they did a couple for the PlayStation as well as the Super NES. So, this is a real win. This brings back so many memories. I love this game. Very cool. It really has that FX chip type, you know, graphics. Really cool use of the of the chip, um, showing as you're coming down to the land, showing like real 3D little buildings and stuff. Very cool. So this is a very cool game. Really happy to have that in my collection. I actually made out a lot better. I was just going to pick up a couple games, but some of the games are really cheap. I found. Um, Hardcore 4x4, 
It's one of my favorite early PlayStation 1 games. This the game looks like it literally was brand new. There's not a scratch on the jewel case. Uh, excellent condition. Two dollars. I mean, and again, a lot of the games that I like are kind of so-so games that a lot of other people don't like. I'm not into a lot of the Chrono Trigger. And a lot of the more expensive games are like Parasite Eve, and a lot of those are very pricey, and all the Final Fantasy games for the PlayStation 1. Uh, so it, a lot of the games I wanted were cheap, and a lot of these guys will say, you know, you'll offer a price and say, are you done shopping? Why don't you wait and get a, assemble a bunch of games, and then I'll give you a good deal on all of them. So... I did. I, I scored. I found a lot of good games I was going after. This was one of them. Uh, very tricky. This is a tough game, but once you master it, it's a lot of fun. Um, this is a game I've always wanted to get. It's one of the, I've seen. I've seen gameplay videos, old retro reviews. It looks so cool. It's kind of like a mech game, and that's Future Cop LAPD. And I got an excellent, perfect copy of this game. I'm so happy. It's, some of these discs are in good shape. Some of them are kind of scratched up, but I can have them resurfaced. So I got this wonderful game. Some of the best explosions I've ever seen. I watched some gameplay video of this, and I was surprised how it really looks good, and it still holds up well today. This is a great game. So this is very cool. I'm thrilled to have this. And I, I've tried to look at dimples for this, and I never come across it. I've never seen it locally. So I knew when I went there, I said, you, you watch. You'll probably have a couple of these games, PlayStation 1 games. And now I'm on this big PS1 kick in my garage, so it's a lot of fun. Another game I just mentioned on my Twisted Metal, little retrospective thing. This one, the, the disc is a little scratched, the case was a little hammered, but it's all there. And it's hard to find. And that's Road Trip from Single Track. These were the devs that did the original Twisted Metal 1 and 2. When they lost the license, they had the, the falling out with Sony, they went on to do this. It's kind of a Twisted Metal clone. It's kind of an apocalyptic world, and you're like a glorified mercenary taxi driver taking tourists through the, <laughs> the apocalyptic landscape. They take photo ops and pictures and stuff, and you've got to get in there as fast as you can and battle out other mercenaries. It's a very clever idea. Very cool, really crazy, wacky characters. Watch some gameplay videos and reviews of this. It's very, very neat. I love this game, Rogue Trip, from Single Track. Uh, in fact, there's a really cool ad for Duke Nukem Time to Kill inside. Very cool. This is such a hidden gem. I love this game to death. It's got the wackiest characters, really cool voiceovers, little nice menus. And it's got that classic Twisted Metal type gameplay. It's kind of like mixing Twisted Metal with Crazy Taxi. Very, very cool. And if that's not cool enough, this is like kind of a holy grail for me. Man, I've wanted this for so long. And that's the G Police. In the big extra wide kind of double case deal. Excellent condition. This is a flawless disc. The disc are in perfect condition. No scratches on it. I mean, really a clean, and I got this, like, dirt cheap. This is part of a deal where I assembled several games, and they gave us a good price on all of them. I didn't quite have enough money with my $20, so Steve threw in a, some money, so I was able to get all of these games for a really good price, and I can pay them back later. I'm so happy. Not only that, but Steve picked out this. He said, Dean, he said, you might want to get this follow-up to G-Police. I didn't know they even had a sequel. You know, again, back then, we didn't have the internet, and if my game store didn't have it, I didn't see it. This is one that's amazingly I missed. What's it called? G-Police Weapon, Weapons of Justice, I think it says. I can't, my eyes are so bad, I can't even read it. And the graphics look even better on this than this one. So now I've got the G-Police games in my PlayStation 1 collection. And then I found this for two bucks in excellent condition. It's the only Midnight Club I'm missing. That's the very first one. I bought this the day it came out originally for the Play PlayStation 2 and loved this. This was the game that sold me on the Midnight Club series. Is the original. It's only on the PlayStation 2. It's not on the original Xbox. Now, you can get Midnight Club 2 and 3 on the original Xbox and then, of course, Midnight Club LA on the, for the 360 and the PlayStation 3. But this was the one that Rockstar did that really gave Need for Speed a run for its money. It's a very cool game, kind of a point A to point B, any way you can get there kind of game. Very cool. I love this game. It's a fantastic series. There was a lot of style. The earlier ones really had nice characters and really cool little um, 
it was more of a story and cool characters that you liked to that had a lot of style and character to them that you could race and interact with, and it was very cool. So I, I found I, this is my final game that I found. This is a major holy grail, and this is a game that I beat back in the day, and it's not it's no pushover, and that's Alien Resurrection. My God, I have never seen this locally. I have looked for three years for this game. Could not find it. They wanted a little bit more than this that I wanted to pay, but because I got so many of the other games, they gave it, you know, gave it to me for a really good price, and I'm real happy with it. I, I love this Alien Resurrection, and it's one of the, the, kind of the grandfather of FPS games. It was for the FPS controls that we're acclimated with now with both thumbsticks, one for camera and one for movement, this was the first game to do that. And at the time, it was kind of awkward. It really took some a while to get used to it, because I was used to the tank controls of the early PS1 games. But this is a fantastic game. Very atmospheric, really creepy. I like the movie as well. I know the movie's hated by a lot of people, but I actually like the film. It's, it's got some really quirky, hum, dark humor in it, which I really like. Uh, Brad Dorif is just priceless in it. <laughs> it's so good. So I, I'm, I'm real happy with this. It's quite removed from the film, but still, it's a great game, very atmospheric, and it still holds up relatively well for a PlayStation 1 game today. I'm real happy with this, to have this in the collection. So that was a, that was a big windfall, and I, we found these early in the day. So we got there, and then later the place packed up. I mean, you could barely get through the crowd. It was like elbow to elbow in there. But when we first got there early, we went in, and we just we immediately hit all of the booths real quickly before... <clears throat> Everything was gone. My friend Steve found a lot of games he was looking for. He was really excited. They had he was he found a, a, a game GameCube version of Resident Evil 4 that was in this beautiful kind of a scarlet red metal tin case with all of the extra stuff in it. It was like perfect condition, but they wanted 80 bucks for it. So he waited until the very end of the day and tried to offer him 60, but they, they wouldn't take it. It was like an like a flawless mint condition. So, but other than that, he found everything he was looking for. And then later we saw, uh, we saw before it got too packed in there, we bumped into uh, Radical Reggie and Adam Corlick in the hallway. And we had a nice, very nice chat with him for, for some time, a lot longer than I had planned. Later they kind of get inundated with people. But because we were there early and they had nothing really much to do, we welcomed them to Sacramento, told them how much we appreciated their channels. Uh, Steve had already kind of had... Uh, he, he had known um, through some of the private uh, PlayStation groups and other retro gaming groups, he is kind of friends with Radical Reggie, but Radical Reggie had never seen him in person, didn't know what he looked like. So it was, they hit it off pretty well, and it was a really nice time. We really had a great time. I was able to get a couple pictures with Reggie and with Adam Korluk. Um <clears throat> Now, there's one picture here that I'm going to show. This is for Ben Boris, my good friend in the U.K., uh, ben, uh, this was Adam's idea. He says, he said, oh, you're friends with Ben. He said, well, then we need to take another picture. And this picture's for you, Ben. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we had a great time. And not only that, at the end of the day, they had a nice kind of a question and answer panel. I took a few pictures. I, I, I wish I could have taken more video of it. I was just kind of tired and really just wanted to sit and enjoy it. But I did ask, I asked a couple questions, but my first question here I've got on film Basically, what I asked them at the beginning of it got cut off. I'll preface it by saying, I said everyone had some. Everyone had great questions for. There was a panel of four people: Adam Korolik, Radical Reggie, this other fellow. I'm not sure. Another big local YouTuber, and then a guy that's a famous voice actor, but he's also a gamer. Been a voice actor in the early, um, you know, little top-down isometric um, Fallout One and Two games. And so it was a great panel. They all had a wonderful time answering the questions. But I'll have one segment of it here. And what my question was is, um, name of all of the different gaming generations, name your favorite, uh, your favorite gaming generation and, and, and why, and then name three games from that generation that really solidified your love for that generation, which really were the reasons why that you loved it. So it was a great. Each, they each had interesting answers. And I'll have that here. Yeah, it would have to be, yeah, like, like you know, yeah, anything that's like seventh and below, let's say. 
Yeah, name, name a generation that just really, really did it for you with all the planets lined up and like it's your favorite generation and you know the reasons why. Um, so fifth generation. So fifth generation. Um, three games out of that that I, could, like, that I love to play, some Coding 2, uh, that RPG. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of RPGs for me back then. Uh, Star mm-hmm. Ocean, mm-hmm. second yeah. story, which is Good. Like, mm-hmm. one of the, I think it's one of the best RPGs of all time. Yes. There's 81 different endings. Uh, yes. It's pretty much mm-hmm. Had this emotion engine in it called uh, where you could like characters can kind of fall in love with each other mm-hmm. and like that would help influence battle. Like one character got hurt, the other character go into rage mode, mm-hmm. all this critical damage. I, I also was really fascinated with astronomy, so I love the different travel of different planets. Mm-hmm. So that's another reason I, I like the game a lot. And one more game, I would say I'm gonna go with another RPG. I'm gonna pick uh, Grand Hill. Oh, excellent. Uh, Good. Go. Oh, that's tough. Um, some days you ask me, I'm going to say 6th generation, mm-hmm. PS2, Xbox, GameCube, Dreamcast, I guess technically Samsung, new one. Mm-hmm. And then the other half of the time I'm saying 4th gen, which is usually, you know, Sega Genesis, mm-hmm. Nintendo Turbo Graphics, 6th I can keep going, you get it. Um, but I'm, today I'm probably going to go with 4th gen. I think I'm going to go with mm-hmm. that, and I'm going to say those games for me is like Donkey oh. Kong Country 2, mm-hmm. Super Mario World, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think today because that one, the edge that one has for me is like that's when I was a kid, so that's when yes. the games were just like you know that. Right? Oh, good, thanks. I still feel like yeah, the sixth generation of consoles goes unmatched right now. Like for, for when it comes to like the GameCube and like Nintendo, I feel like Nintendo was super different in that generation more than any other generation. Like it had like the, of course, Metroid Prime, one of my favorite games mm-hmm. ever. Because um, of it's, mm-hmm. no, you hate it so much. But um, it's like I also felt like they're being kind of experimental in that generation too. Like the game Mario, Surprise mm-hmm. Sunshine, that's the second game. A freaking mm-hmm. water jet attack. Like, mm-hmm. other games not that. And then Wind Waker, of course, being my third one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that one too. Like, what if Zelda was a girl? I'm just kidding. What if Zelda was on water? Mm-hmm. Zelda is a girl. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. You play this link. You play this Zelda. That's the joke, Chase. <laughs> Some people. I swear. <laughs> oh, my turn. Yes. I already answered kind of that sort of thing the last time. So yeah, that's true. Want everybody else to do the same thing I did? Yeah. Let's see. What what generations did I not talk about? I didn't talk about. I love the PS2 generation. Mm-hmm. I, I played way more PS2 games than I did the. Uh, Xbox, would you call GameCube in that, in that yes, song? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the original, like, oh, the, I love the uh, KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic 1. Excellent, yeah. Loved, loved those. Not so much Chain Empire, but I played it and any of the Bioware stuff and going on. And then next generation after that, playing the Mass Effect. So mm-hmm. My favorite Mass Effect is the first one. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I, really, I love yeah. the first yeah. Mass Effect. You I know it, like, everybody. It up. Oh, <laughs> I have tried to I've tried to finish Andromeda yeah. so many times again, and each time I, I play that, said, "Hmm, maybe I can make an Arconian in Skyrim." <laughs> <It's a real laughs> yeah, and then I like take it up, put in freaking Skyrim. Like exactly, because everyone's face in that game is tight. It's the same. It's the same combat every single time. So I get why you like Mass Effect One though, because it's the most different. Episode. Yeah, it's so it's so different. I mean, I like. Don't get me wrong. I like two and three. I like the story and how they connect and all that. I like that. But there's there was just something special. I, I got really into the storyline of, of the first one. It was all new, so new and fresh. Yeah, it introduced my, you. Like two and three came out. It was all kind of like, yeah, these are the these are these guys again. These are the you Solarians, know, and uh, we already know about those, so we don't have any information. <laughs> you should be a voice actor. I, I should be. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm like. So anyway, it was a great time. Wonderful time. Thank you, Steve Baker, so much for <laughs> taking me there. He's been such a generous, such a good friend. He's my best friend here in Sacramento. It's so nice to have not only a good friend, but someone who's a fellow gamer. Uh, I was hoping to go over to his house since he's got a giant game collection. He's got a massive game collection of hardware as well as games, and I'm dying to see it. He wanted to take me after the event, but I had some some family that were visiting here at the house, and I had to get home to see them. In fact, I kind of missed them by the time I got home. They just left, but it worked out good. We had a wonderful time. We had a nice lunch. Um, it was so nice to be around other retro gamers and just be in, an, in, in, in kind of a very down-to-earth atmosphere. And when you see a lot of people and people you know, I didn't know anyone there other than Adam Korolek and 
Reggie only from YouTube. I mean, I've never met them in person before, but it was so nice meeting them. They're both very genuinely good guys, and what you see is the real, the real deal. They're not phonies at all. Really nice fellows, had a wonderful time. They really took the time to, to chat with you and talk about gaming. In fact, Reggie and I were talking about <clears throat> gaming today, how it's so hard for us in the 8th gen to finish these big games. And we're finding ourselves kind of going back to these older generations because you have just as much fun with them in small bursts. A burst of like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or a couple hours. And it's, it's just more fun to enjoy the games. The newer games today, you know, they're 60 hours, 100 hours, and it's hard for me to finish them. And I've got 144 hours in Fallout 4, and I'm only 46% of the way through it. Or Mad Max, I've got you know, 270 hours and four attempts because of all the patches that the game needed. I had to keep restarting the game for corrupted save files and things, but uh, I love the games today. I, you know, don't get me wrong, and I want to someday be able to get through and actually finish one of these monster games, but I'm really enjoying the retro gaming because it's great. Reggie's right. You can get in, you can just go home because he gets tired, he has limited time. You can easily put an old PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 game in finish it, have a wonderful experience, shut the damn thing off and go to bed, you know, it's a beautiful thing, so. Anyway, uh, that was just kind of an unexpected video, but I thought I'd share my little adventure. I'm so happy with these game pickups and some of the wonderful gifts that I've got from my friends here. It's It means so much to me. So, again, guys, thank you so much. Have a wonderful Merry Christmas and enjoy those games.